Merci d'être ici pour euh, la réponse de Parti vert du Canada sur le, le nouveau rapport que M. Guibault a, a décrit comme un plan. Aujourd'hui, notre premier ministre, le ministre des Ressources naturelles, puis le ministre de l'Environnement et du Changement climatique, l'honorable Stephen Guibault, puis aussi, aussi je pense peut-être euh, euh, M. Champagne, euh, euh, sera dans une conférence de presse dans quelques heures à Vancouver. So we know that the new uh, so-called 2030 emissions reduction plan has been released this morning pursuant to what is euphemistically called Canada's Net Zero Emissions Accountability Act. I have to say I was expecting more than this, but I want to go through it quickly and leave time for questions, but I'm afraid I'm going to be a bit school marmish here because I imagine there are a lot of reporters digging into this and getting ready to ask the Prime Minister and the Minister of Environment some questions. So I wanted to give you my sense of how hard it is to read this document <laughs> and see if I can provide some help. Uh, it's not easy to trace the numbers. And when you're dealing with a document that is supposed to be Canada's response to our nationally determined contribution, which we've tabled with the United Nations, that, and is part of the Net Zero Accountability Act, is 40 to 45 percent reductions below 2005 levels by 2030. And nowhere in this document do you find on one page, here's the 2005 emissions, here's the 40 to 45 percent reductions by 2030, much less do you find exactly how we're going to get there. So in finding the math, in case there's reporters out there who want to, or members of the public who want to scribble this down, look to page 88, 89, 90, and 91. There's some math there. And there's some other math on page 179. So cutting to the chase here, uh, what we have is the 2005 megaton number, which is, does not appear on various graphs. A lot of the graphs in this chart start at 2019 levels of emissions and then go down. So je pense que c'est uh, une chose très facile d'avoir un seul page avec le niveau d'émission de 2005, parce que ça c'est la date de référence pour notre uh, cible dans l'accord de Paris pour réduire les gaz à effet de serre par 40 à 45 à référence du niveau de 2005. Alors, Statistics Canada has a different number for 2005 than Environment Canada. I have no explanation for that, but let's use the Environment Canada numbers that are in this document. So in 2005, our emissions were 739 megatons. In 2019, they were 730 megatons. In other words, hardly a reduction at all between 2005 and 2019. Somewhat shockingly, we've been through two elections since they last updated the numbers. So this report in 2022 somewhat apologetically notes there's a lag time for pulling the numbers together, so we don't have anything more up to date than 2019. So going from there, we know that in 2019 emissions were 730 megatons. If we were to reduce by 45 percent, then our emissions in 2030 should be 333 megatons. Don't bother looking. You won't find any page that says 333 megatons because they've abandoned the notion that our target is 40 to 45 percent. Everything in this document is on 40 percent. And there's still gaps. Can we get to 40 percent below 2005 by 2030? The other thing that, that is somewhat surprising is that what this sets out and where you find the numbers that says sector by sector, if we're going to get to 40 percent below 2005 by 2030, we'd like to see these reductions in, say, agriculture, electricity, oil and gas. But these numbers are not targets. They're not binding. They are described as one pathway. There may be others. And the numbers are described as, quote, unquote, an indicative understanding of a possible pathway. So there's nothing here that says if you're in the oil and gas sector, you're really going to have to cut your emissions. In fact, in reference to the oil and gas sector on page 48, they refer to oil and gas reductions as being on the basis of intensity. So I know people who follow climate policy will know what the word intensity means. It means you reduce the amount of emissions per barrel of oil. 
but you can produce more oil and have higher levels of emissions and still be considered to have met your intensity target because you've reduced the amount per barrel of oil. The other thing that's really important to note is that the target, 40 to 45 percent below 2005 by 2030, is inconsistent with the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. La GIEC était tellement claire. Il y a uh, presque quatre années, le, le GIEC a, a, a relu le report sur le, le défi énorme de gagner 1,5 degré. We, that's why I'm wearing this button, 1.5 degrees. That's all that really matters, is that we hold 1.5 degrees, because that's our Paris commitment to try as hard as we can to hold 1.5 degrees, and as far below 2 degrees as possible. But the government of Canada has systematically erased the 1.5 target, the so-called net zero emissions plan and the net zero emissions act doesn't talk about what the IPCC says we have to do to hold to 1.5. They've erased 1.5 and replaced it with 1.5 by, you know, to hang on to 1.5 at all. The IPCC is clear the window will close on that well before 2030, unless all the countries on Earth do an enormous amount more than what we're now planning to do. And Canada has the weakest target in the industrialized world and the worst record. And we just dumped our target down by 5% because we're not talking about what it takes to get to 45% below 2005. We're talking about what it takes to get to 40, and we don't actually have a plan. We have an indicative understanding. If I can leave you with one thing to hang on to when talking to the government of Canada and their partners in the NDP, it's this. They're missing the word urgency. We don't have till 2050. Net zero by 2050 is completely irrelevant, as the IPCC has modeled, without dramatic reductions by 2030. In other words, hanging on to a livable world, because right now we're at one 0.1 degrees Celsius global average temperature increase, and you know what we saw this year in British Columbia, you know what we saw in India, you know what we're seeing around the world at 1.1 degree. 1.5 degrees Celsius is not a safe place, but it's safer than anything else we have a chance to hold on to. And the government of Canada has yet to understand that this is an emergency, that the situation is urgent, and that this, while full of really good measures that I really like, if they don't get us to a survivable climate, then it's really kind of irrelevant. As Phil McGibbon says, this is losing more slowly. Thank you. We, um, l'effort ici avec les modeling, c'est seulement pour montre un possible route. Ce n'est pas un cible, ce n'est pas un cible fixé, ce n'est pas un cible dans la législation. C'est seulement une idée et il y a les autres idées. Ça, c'est la façon euh, dont le rapport pour euh, les, les cibles, pour, euh, par exemple, les édifices du Canada, pour l'efficacité énergétique pour nos, nos édifices, c'est bon. Mais ce n'est pas un plan avec, uh, ce n'est pas avec les règlements, ce n'est pas avec législation. C'est seulement une des possibles à venir, il y a les autres. Mais ce n'est pas, pas obligatoire. Et au niveau du plafonnement pour le secteur gazier, le pétrolier, on parle, on le mentionne, mais on dit qu'il faut des compensations. Ouais. Euh, je n'ai pas remarqué de date pour le début de ce plafonnement. Ouais, c'est pour le secteur pétrolier dans les dernières élections, les libéraux ont promis d'avoir un cap pour dire que maintenant, ça c'est le, le plus que jamais. Mais maintenant, ils disent que non, non, nous ne sommes pas prêts pour, le, pour annoncer le cap. Nous avons donc le, seulement le début de consultation avec le secteur pétrolier, avec les peuples autochtones, avec tout le monde. Alors, on doit attendre encore 
pour leur plan pour le secteur pétrolier. Mais dans ce rapport, c'est clair que le gouvernement du Canada imagine que c'est possible d'avoir une croissance de production pétrolière et après ça, après la croissance, de réduire avec les technologies pas maintenant euh, 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 disponibles. Il y a un niveau, euh, un niveau de, um, on dit en anglais, je ne sais pas le mot en français, mais penser d'une façon magicale, c'est magical thinking. We're going to have small and medium reactors. N'existe pas. C'est une idée hypothèque. Mais le secteur nucléaire dit qu'il y a les petits réacteurs. On peut peut-être commander dans un grand catalogue. Non, il n'existe pas. C'est une idée. C'est tellement cher, mais il n'existe pas. Et l'autre euh, technologie que le gouvernement, est, il, il, dans cette plan, il y a un engagement avec euh, le financement pour l'idée d'avoir euh, le, le um, pour uh, carbon capture and storage. Et il a ajouté un U, carbon capture utilization and storage. Le U, c'est pour um, le amélioration de production pétrolière parce que dans le, 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 le processus de mettre le carbone sur le sol, il y a la possibilité de bouger le, les produits pétroliers qui sont laissés sur le sol dans les dans les, les, les so in English because I can't forget this. There's a lot of drilling for oil and gas where at some point they're just not getting oil and gas out of the well. But with carbon capture, utilization, and storage, they can be putting carbon down below ground, down a drill site, and that will have the effect of stirring it up a bit so they can pull out that little bit, sort of like a sardine in the corner of the can that you can't quite get. So that's what carbon capture, utilization, and storage is. It's producing more oil and gas while also saying that this is magical and will reduce uh, oil and gas emissions. This isn't a fully developed plan at all. It doesn't even pretend to be. This is a fully developed indicative understanding of what we might do if we had a plan. This is a, a description of a lot of things that were already promised. They're well described. Some have more money. There's no simple way to read this, for instance. If there's no simple page that says, okay, here's where we tell you what we've already been doing, and here's where we tell you what's new. It's all, c'est un mélange avec les choses uh, déjà annoncées et quelques nouveaux programmes. So without being a policy nerd, I can go through it and say, okay, this was already promised, this looks new. I'm going to have to go back and say, is that really new or was it already promised? But the plan is a recitation in narrative form of what the government already promised to do and with money attached, lots of money to different pockets, But it isn't uh, a plan that tells us, it certainly doesn't tell us how we're going to meet our commitment to 40 to 45 percent below 2005 levels, which is our commitment, because they drop the 45 percent immediately. And everything in this document is about 40. And at 40 to 45 percent as a target, it was already weak and inconsistent with holding to 1.5 degrees. So it, it um, in my view, it's You know, you, if I was a teacher and grading on a curve, I'd say, well, they did a really good job with the pretty pictures. It's like when you have a school kid who puts the, uh, each report on a piece of construction paper, so the pages are one's on a nice piece of red paper and one's on a... This has got all the bells and whistles of good presentation, except for the fact that you can't find the numbers easily, and it's not a plan. Specifically on oil and gas, how significant is it that they did not include those details? It's very significant because oil and gas, as they do report, is the single fastest growing sector of our emissions. And again, when they use the word intensity in terms of what oil and gas will have to do, intensity isn't absolute emissions reductions. It's relative to how much you're producing. Uh, I think it's really troubling that we don't have targets for the oil and gas sector that make it clear. And again, there's no commitment here to a Just Transition Act in terms of when will we see that tabled? We, there are things here that should have been easy to say, this will be at this point, this will be at that point. And you're quite right, on oil and gas, it's very vague. And we know that they're just starting the consultation process with industry to figure out exactly how the cap, what will the cap be and how fast will it be brought down. 
And are, when are we going to bring it down to absolute zero? Because we are in a climate emergency. It's not a time to be trying to figure out how do we tweak the words from the, from the IPCC to make it look like we're holding to 1.5 degrees when we're clearly abandoning that goal. The window on 1.5 degrees for the world will close before the first milestone year of this, of this act. And that's horrific because we pledged, and we pledged again in Glasgow at COP26, all the countries of the world gathered and said, we have to keep 1.5 alive. We can't allow global average temperature increase to exceed two degrees. Right now we're on track globally for 2.7 degrees Celsius global average temperature increase, or roughly twice what we think might be a safer landing place than the far more risky futures that await our kids. You mentioned uh, financing the capture and storage uh, uh, initiatives. Um, this is a, an approach that has been criticized yeah. by many countries. Yeah. Um, so what message does the government send in, in going, going through with that? Yeah. C'est un message, uh, uh, un message très négatif pour l'avenir, parce qu'il y a, comme, comme vous avez dit, uh, plus de 400 experts scientifiques qui ont écrit une lettre ouverte vers notre gouvernement de, s'il vous plaît, ne pas donner l'argent pour une autre forme de subvention en faveur des produits pétroliers. So, going with carbon capture and storage is a subsidy to fossil fuels from a government, and for that matter, Canada pledged to end all our subsidies to fossil fuels in 2009 when Harper was Prime Minister. We're still arguing about the definition of subsidy. Mais c'est clairement la réalité, et c'est les experts qui ont dit que l'idée de carbon capture and storage, c'est une idée faux qui ne uh, donne rien pour notre planète pour notre climat et c'est une c'est une autre forme de subvention pour aider notre secteur pétrolier. Merci. C'est clair? Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you so much.